Hello and thanks for joining me for some more landscape photography. Today I'm down on the coast close to where I live on Anglesey. Now I was supposed to be on a ridge about 3,000 feet up with a couple of mates doing a wild camp this weekend but it's been horrendously stormy unfortunately we had to call it off it would have been just too dangerous so I've been going a bit stir crazy it's only just brightening up now we're getting on towards the end of Sunday afternoon but I absolutely had to get out the house and get some fresh air just have a bit of a walk now I don't really hold out much hopes for any landscape photography on this particular walkout. Of course I've got my camera um, and I'll be looking to see if I can get an image or two. What I might do is just show you some seascape techniques that I use. I'm not going to be getting any portfolio shots today, but perhaps I can give you some ideas for the next time you're down at the coast. What's caught my eye about this particular composition is the way it sort of perfectly sums up a grey day on a rocky coast. I really like the way this pool, which actually isn't a rock pool, it's a rainwater pool. We're quite high up above sea level here. It's not really a cliff top, but uh, it's a rocky outcrop. But the uh, fault lines in the rocks and the triangular shape of this pool lead your eye across to the Lleen Peninsula with some really interesting texture in the rough grey clouds that are hanging low over it. Compositionally, that's what I really like about it. From an exposure standpoint, not too difficult. Got to be careful about focus on this one because there is some quite close foreground, uh, but shooting at f5.6 and focusing just on the other side of the pool, it appears that I'm getting full front to back uh, sharpness. I'm shooting at 12 millimeters because I really do want to emphasize the foreground on this one uh, and my exposure is running at 40th of a second. Kind of irrelevant though because there, there isn't anything within the frame that I'm worried about moving at all. I really like the colors in the rocks and I also really like the color in the base of this pool so I've used a polarizer to take the glare off so you can see into the pool. Uh, one little tip uh, for coastal photography on a day like this, you won't be able to feel it but the air is absolutely full of sea spray so make sure you wipe your lenses and all your optics on a regular basis. right down underneath the cliff now. I've got down out of the wind and I'm much closer to water level. I do need to be careful, the tide's on the turn and so it's going to be slowly coming in. It's not a spring tide so it's not going to come in too fast but a, another tip for you if you're out and about doing seascapes and you decide to scramble down a cliff like this do keep an eye on the tide and make sure you know whether it's coming in or going out. People get stranded when they think it's going out, only to find it's coming in. Anyway, let's see what I can find from this particular vantage point. So this is the sort of thing that I was particularly looking to achieve when I came out today, was to spend a bit of time with a detailed composition rather than the wide vista we were looking at just a little earlier. 
What I'm looking to do from this vantage point is to find a composition looking across these rocks to really focus in on something tight. There is enough movement to get a bit of practice in. There's not a lot of colour, so I'm not going to get any portfolio shots. Although there's some beautiful detail in the sky, it's quite brooding. We've had some really stormy weather lately. So the idea will be to show you a few techniques, how I might go about it, a bit of practice for me, and maybe save it for a, a better day with better light to come back and go for that portfolio shot. I've got myself set up with a composition. I'm not using any foreground at all. I'm zoomed in across on these rocks, just on the far side of this little inlet. We've got quite a strong westerly wind blowing in today, so the swell is coming nicely onto them from this particular angle. Now, I'm shooting with uh, a remote shutter, uh, and the reason for that is that normally I'd be using a two second delay to avoid shaking the camera at all but I really want to uh, use a high burst mode here uh, because I want to catch a whole series of frames each time a wave comes in and it's just easier to use a remote shutter that fires it immediately and will run off maybe 10, 20 frames, something like that each time I spot a decent wave rolling in. Now there are two particular styles of image that people tend to look for when you're shooting waves on rocks. I have a preference, but the one that you tend to see more of is when the wave hits and you get a big splash effect and you've got that big impressive power in the wave as it smashes into the rock. Now that can be really spectacular, but to be honest with you, I would say you would need it to be a much more blustery day than it is today because yes, we're getting a few impacts, but they're not really that interesting. The other thing about that particular style of image is that those impacts very often just completely hide the rock that they're hitting. So you've got this great big blob of, of bright pixels in your image. Um, and yes, it can, it can be very dramatic. But what I really like is the point at which the wave has broken and then the waves are running off the rock in lots of little waterfalls, maybe one foot, two foot long, as they run back into the water. And I really like that contrast against the dark colour of the rock underneath. And where I'm shooting, it's all covered in barnacles, there's bladder rack on it as well, lots of texture and hopefully lots of interest. So by capturing these bursts of images, what I'm going to be doing is blending those together in post uh, with multiple layers, you know, 10, 20, even 30 or 40 layers to take an average blend that has the most impact of water running off the rock. I've got myself another vantage point but I've come down much lower and I'm right at the head of a little gully with a big rock at the entrance to it so I'm, I'm facing straight into the wind and the swell and every time a wave comes in they hit that rock it breaks them up and throws them against the side of the gully and then the water runs off. Um, it's really difficult because I'm having to wipe my lens constantly but what I'm trying to do as I was doing earlier is get a series of shots with the water running off because I think that's what's going to have the most impact in post. Again, I'm going to need a lot of exposures. This is very much about timing it, um, getting a number of frames as the water's running off that I can then combine in post to create the impact that I'm after. Well, that was bracing. I've had the sea spray in my face for the last half hour. I can barely see a thing out of my glasses. I think I've got about seven or 800 exposures on my SD card. It's gonna take me a while to sift through all of those and pick the best ones out. The technique that I'm gonna be using to bring these images together from today's shoot, it's not like take your camera, wait, 
wait for the wave to hit the rock and fire off a few shots and pick the best one. This is very much about bringing together a number of exposures to pick the best bits of the wave, hitting the rock and running off to create a final artwork. What I'll probably do, if you want, leave a comment below, is show you how I bring them together with a subsequent post-processing video. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, maybe you know somebody else who might too. Hit the share button below. And if you haven't done it yet, why not subscribe now and join me next time. Cheers.